Hello, and welcome to the Frivolous and Frugal Knitting Podcast. We are two sisters who share our fondness of knitting, the things that we create, and our love for the knitting community. And we do it all with just a little twist of both the frivolous and the frugal. A little heavy on frivolous this week, by the way. Um, I am Frivolous Dawn, and in our family's birth order, I am the fourth of eight siblings. And I'm Frugal Miss Penny, and I'm number one in the birth <laughs> order, and I am just cringing to know what a little more frugalist means, but I'm sure we'll learn that as we go along. We have a heartfelt welcome to all our returning viewers. We're so thankful that you make time in your busy schedules to listen to the podcast, and as always, we hope you glean a nugget or two from our knitting adventures. And for those of you who are first-time viewers, we just want to say a hearty hello, and we hope that you too find something that you can take away from our podcast, just not Dawn's yarn, because that just <laughs> wouldn't go with the frivolous nature, that you can apply to your own knitting. So without further ado, grab your knitting, your favorite note-taking device, and a sense of humor, because I have a hunch you're going to need it today, and join us for episode 31 of the Frugal frugal and frivolous, frivolous and frugal podcast. Please, Dawn, take it away. <laughs> we may just make up words today. Who knows? That's right. Well, as far as what is around our next, this is, I don't know if I've shown this for a long time. This is the mm -hmm. Suburban Wrap by Hohe Locatelli. And of course, I'm doing the Hohe Knit Along. So right now, all things Hohe. Um, the Suburban Wrap, I think she did it using Suburban Stitcher yarn, hence the name. Mm -hmm. But um, this is, I had to write it down, Backyard Fiberworks in the Orchard Base. This dark gray color is Storm Cloud. This variegated is Springtime. And the solid green is Hasta. And I'm going to call it the Suburban Wrap 2.0. And here's why. I didn't like, I wanted it longer after it was done. So after about a year of me looking at it and whining, I decided to cut it. So I cut off the bottom and oh. from this stripe section to the gray, I added. I didn't realize you added that yep. much. So I just took a pattern from the other side and repeated it. Yeah. That was brilliant. So it is longer. I don't know. I don't think I measured it. I should probably do that and add it. But what lovely yarn. Um, I did it on a US 6. It is now for me, it's got to go 90 um, inches, which tends to be my sweet spot between 90 and 100. And, um, you know, this I would tell you is not my color. I bought the yarn the first time I ever went to Stitches Midwest. So that had to be maybe 2017. And not thinking about it, the yarn was in 150 gram skeins. Oh. So that's why I had, I don't know if you remember, I gave you the extra and then I took it back. <laughs> 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 the privilege of giving yarn to a sister. Um, <laughs> that's right. I gave it to you, but I want it back. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, but I did it with class. You got it back in a Ziploc. <laughs> you did. <laughs> and it looked kind of new too, so <laughs> or Only unused for you. <laughs> hey, and while I'm thinking about this, here's a squirrel. Somebody asked on the podcast, must be a new viewer, why we have bread ties as part of our intro. So I will let you not only say what's around your neck, but why do we have bread ties in our intro? Well, the bread ties were a notion that I was hoping my sister would come on board with. <laughs> I use them typically to wrap the cast on tail from a project around the bread tie so that it doesn't get caught in it. And, um, oh gosh, I don't have one handy, but if I did, I would show you how that works. I'll have one for you next um, episode. <laughs> and Dawn's like, really penny and so from that point we just decided hey that's my touch of frugal and because i use them and i yeah. just cast this summer sitting here that's why i don't have it on the 
the bread tie. But for my sister's sake, and in honor of her, in honor of her frivolous nature, I started bedazzling them <laughs> <laughs> with all sorts of gems. And so we made them into stitch markers. And it's another thing I don't use. <laughs> fancy stitch markers, but Dawn has persuaded me that there's a place for them. So thanks for asking. We appreciate that. Yeah, very good. <laughs> and by the way, if you're really itching for a bread tie stitch marker that needs, that is bedazzled, let me know and I'll happily send you a few. <laughs> but I'm not going to do them until it's too cold for me to work in the yard. So you'll have to wait a while. <laughs> that sounds like a win-win. Okay. <laughs> Please send me a few. <laughs> Yeah. Don't you know I will, um, in your <laughs> colors, by the way. Um, so what is around my neck? All right. In the spirit <laughs> of transparency, um, I only have like six shawls or something. So I'm starting something new. And I would encourage all of you to do this because it's so fashionable. I didn't realize it until this morning. Um, this is not a shawl. It is the fiber that I am going to use. <laughs> and cast on this week. So behold, <laughs> my unraveled hank of fiber from the Blue Brick Dye Works. And this is the Manitoulin Sparkle Mammoth Base in the Ibis Gradient colorway. Now, this is a, a yarn that I specifically purchased to do the project wingspan. So if you get into Ravelry and you search for wingspan, you're gonna see a beautiful shawl. It's at the request of my daughter-in-law. And so there it is. I will tell you though, it's definitely for me, $5 signs on the frugalometer. So anyway, this is what I hope to cast on this week. <laughs> and likewise, um, Opal is wearing <laughs> Even more fiber. <laughs> this is Blue Doxy Dye Works pink and green uh, colorway on the long, in the long hair worsted base. I am going to cast on another sweet sweater. Woo yes, yes, I am. So, um, and for the and for our viewers, um, my hashtag six sweet sweaters has now become hashtag seven sweet sweaters because we just learned a week ago that one of our nieces is going to have a baby girl. So I'm going to have to find a seventh pattern. Yes, you are. Yes. And because this is washable, I think it's a great gift. People can wash it. And I would say on my frugalometer, it's a three, three dollar oh. sign frugalometer. Yeah, and oh, by the way, Monique is sporting the Space Between hat, which oh. has become one of my favorites with a pom-pom, by the way. I um, see that. Yes, so it was just knit in Cascade 220, washed up, beautiful, it's soft. You've already seen it, but that's what she's wearing this morning. Yeah, that is um, a nice pom-pom. And I don't think I've done that hat, Space Between you might not have, but I like it. And of course, it won't come as any surprise to you, Dawn. It's because I like the texture. Yeah. I like texture. So I think that's why I liked it. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to have to add that to my list. Yeah. So uh, what's off your needles this week? Everyone, just take a deep breath and hold it. Because you're going to squeal. It and is. Get... It is done. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. This is Festival of Stitches by Lisa Hannes. And wow, it is, it blocked beautiful. Dawn, dawn, dawn. Yeah, so I forget where I was last week, maybe in the black section. Um, but yeah, I even like how that red, how it ended turned out. That's just a simple ribbing. Oh, oh, you know, I think I was doing the other side. I was on the black, wasn't I, last week? The yes, black, you were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, black cables. Yeah. And, you know, one side is beautiful as the other. It is 94 inches long, and I was not super aggressive in the block. Um, I didn't want to distort the center triangle. And so, um, yeah. Now, it calls for a tassel right here at the end. Um, but here's my problem. 
Sure, here's my problem. I only have a ball of each left, a little ball. I don't know what I did with it. But yeah, I have like uh, six grams of each. So I don't have much wiggle room to do a tassel wrong. And I've never done a tassel before. So she links to a video by Pearl Soho in the pattern. And I want to do a three color tassel with all three of these colors in it. And I stole it off of somebody else's pattern that I saw. So, so dare I say, practice with some yeah. very inexpensive yarn first and try it yeah. and see what you don't like about it. Kind of like what we did with pom-poms. Those first pom-poms we made were just with um, scrap yarn. And that way, if we messed it up, we weren't, you know, losing any of our good fiber. Yeah. Oh, okay. gosh, I love this. I cannot wait for the day that you debut it. Take some pictures. Well, and it again confirms my love for this shape. Of course, I love crescents too, but mm -hmm. um, there is something. Now, three skeins of fingering weight. I did it in Ba yarn in the La Jolla base. And um, on the frugalometer, my guess is the pattern I would call a two. Two, yeah. And the yarn, I'd probably have to go four. Um, it's an 80 20, 80% 80 merino, 20% cashmere. I followed the pattern and uh, her suggestions for the one she did. And I'm telling you, the what yarn weighed out perfectly. I could not ask for better use of yarn as far as using the whole skein. I started it August 1st, so seven weeks. And I signed up for the Stephen West Knit Along, which <laughs> is five skeins of yarn in four weeks. <laughs> okay, I'm not good at math, but <laughs> hey, you're warmed up. Everything's I'm, ready to go. I'm trying to think how I can call in sick for four weeks and, <clears throat> and not be suspicious. About that afterwards, because I might do the same thing, <laughs> just so I can watch you knit. Yeah. Um, so what, and, and for our viewers, let's just remind them of how you um, protected your red before you started the project. Excellent. Somebody had posted um, in our comments that they had used a red ba yarn that bled. So it was the first time I did a citric acid wash. So um, I followed the seven step directions on the Pearl Soho website mm -hmm. on how to pre-soak it using citric acid. And when I went to block it, I had a tinge, just a very slight tinge of red in the water, but it did not bleed. Um, and so as much as I whined about bleeding, I'm going to be tempted to do that citric wash. It was not a hassle. Um, it wasn't, so, huh? No, so my whining was definitely um, overstated. So, <laughs> All right, well. so what's off your needles? Well, I am happy to report that number four from Six Sweet Sweaters is off my list. And I am going to just humbly and very embarrassingly admit, one of our viewers suggested this pattern. And I am so sorry, I forgot who you were. So when I mention it, if you hear it again, would you please message me and let me know so that I can give you credit. This pattern is called In Three. Oh. And it hasn't been blocked yet. Um, you all know that I wait until my, my stack is knee high before I block. But you will see that it's a simple little pinafore type design that will have three buttons up at the top yoke. And it was knit in Plymouth Encore, which is a, a washable worsted weight yarn on size nines. It's the 18 month size. I told Dawn before we start, I'm casting on another one. I like this pattern. I think I knit it in two days. Wow. It did not take long at all. It's very straightforward, one piece, top down. So if I were you and you like to knit baby sweaters, I would recommend this pattern. So thank you to our precious viewer and my sincerest apologies that I did not remember who suggested it. So do I assume that's what you're going to use blue doxy yarn for, for the next oh, one? Yes, thank you. Yes, that's the okay. one. I'm going to use, um, I'm going to make another one of these because this is a bit of variegation in it. Yeah. And I think that pattern can handle it. I am in, sir, I need to pick one of my other saved baby sweaters for sweater number five. And I just haven't decided which one I'm going to do yet. 
And then let's have you show both a solid and a variegated. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, because I like hey, to see that difference. Speaking of that, can I show something else? Sure. So, you know, we always talk about what we learn. And you all know I finally finished that garter stripe jacket or eyelet stripe jacket. And I showed Dawn this um, because something occurred to me in my sleep. If you can see, I have two different buttons on this. Originally, I was going to put the pink buttons on, but I thought, I don't know if I like those. So I chose these very pretty white snowflakes. And I think, Dawn, I'm going to go with white, but not the snowflakes. And I'll tell you why. I really like this button. I just think it's cute. Yeah. Look at that. But makes it too hard to get it through the buttonhole because these buttonholes are eyelets. They oh. are not a sewn buttonhole. Okay. So the fabric, it still has some air and it's open. So it was hard to get it around each of the snowflakes points. But now I'm on the lookout and I'll go through my stash to see if I have any white buttons. I just think it pops. Can't you it even tell from here? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And so that's another thing I learned. Sometimes it's good to just put those buttons on, step back, look at them. Or if you're torn between two, I just loosely tacked these on. It's not going to be difficult to undo them. That is a um, great idea. That's a good suggestion. <clears throat> yeah. So do you have anything else off your needles? I do. One more. Ooh. Do you share? Oh, oh the, the hat. The, the hat. By Don't Aaron me. Donahue. Don't Don't now, last week I had it in a lovely brown tweed. And I did, when you showed yours, Penny, mm -hmm. I thought your braid so, showed so much better than mine did in the tweed. So I went ahead and frogged that. And I casted this on with um, Haiku by Scassell Sueno. Now, interesting, Sueno... Um, has in Ravelry is declared a DK weight. Uh -huh. but by weight and yardage, it's closer to a worsted. And I think the pattern called for a worsted. I am very happy. I literally followed the pattern um, as written. And last night after knitting with the aunties, I went to attach the pom-pom and I don't have a big button. So oh, I'll get one no. today, but I think that will look. Ah, yes. That'll look nice on there. Ooh, it's just one of those, I um, like that. One of those Czechoslovakian. So this is interesting. You see what attaches it? Two strings. And I think when I attach it to the top, if I leave a gap between the two holes of the button, that'll make a firmer attachment point as opposed to dragging both of these through the center hole. I'm going to space them apart a little bit. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So I was thinking this morning, is that the law of displaced weight? I don't know. I probably should have paid attention in whatever class that was, but I'm sure I was dreaming of Tom Selleck or something. So at the time. So that is the Mia hat by Aaron Donahue. And uh, Brittany, who is B-Wing on Ravelry, uh, suggested that for our virtual knit night. And um, doing the Zooms with the ladies from Magpie's Cottage, um, Laurel's is done, Joyce's is done, each one um, different yarns, but each one delightful. So um, Brittany has to be thrilled with all the finished objects that are going up in that um, discussion board on Ravelry. Absolutely. So. And I think we've decided we might just keep that little thing going. If yeah. you don't have any idea what you'd like to knit during our virtual knit nights, we might just continue to do hat knit alongs. Yeah. I love it. Great gifts, small projects, easy to transport. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. So that yeah. is um, the last thing that's off my needles this week. So what are you diligently working on there? I can Over see Over here you. and watching me count and everything. <laughs> I am, <laughs> I'm going to behave myself. I am knitting the Elise hat and it is by Win Young Huang. And although it only looks like a brown beanie right now, that is because I am fastidiously working on the ears that accompany the hat. And here is a picture of it. <laughs> it is going to be a bunny hat. 
I love and it. It's for the love of grandchildren that I am doing this because I have learned I don't like putsy knitting. Yeah. I don't like, it's just, not that I can't do it. I just don't find it as enjoyable. Um, however, I have one ear completed. We had to, try to redo it twice during knitting with the aunties. Essentially, you can see it is knit as one piece. You bring them over together, sew them so that you have the inside of the ear and the outside of the ear, and then you attach it. This will probably be finished by this evening. And then for her sister, I am going to cast on a gray bunny. Oh. So I'll make those two and move on. This is number 30, hat number 30 in hashtag 45 hats, 45 designers. Wow. Yeah. And uh, for those who are interested in that, I do believe you started a discussion thread. We did. It can be discussion and posts. I oh. have not posted all my hats yet. I have pictures taken for about 20 of them that I'll start putting in Ravelry. But I'm, I'll let you look at my project page just to see my hats. We really want to see your hats. So yeah. please feel free to just start uploading those if you want to. And the list is ongoing. So I update the list every time I add a new hat. So yeah. you can look at that, and that's in the thread also. It'll go way past 45, won't it? <laughs> yeah, like I can never follow the directions in anything I do. Well, I just think it's a great foundation or a good starting point is to think that those are different hats, each one with a different designer. And I think it helps make us aware of other designers we may have never heard of. And then, I don't know about you, then I start looking at their other patterns. And um, it just kind of broadens your horizon. Or you lose hours in the Ravelry um, spiral, so. Yes, and I don't know any of us who have hours to fall into the hole. I mean, right. we have life, right? right? So, yeah. Yeah, it's a what whole uh, work thing. <laughs> work and um, wifing and, you know, mothering and all those other things, grandmothering. Yeah. So what is, what is on your needles? Well, I see you knitting away. I have like three more stitches till the row's done. So I'll do oh, that. Do. So I don't uh, oh, drop we them. You have to frog and tink right here in front of everyone. So, um, you know, that Hohe Knit Along 2020 started in September and you had to, if you wanted to participate, you told them what projects you wanted to do. So I did that three color cashmere cowl. And then this was my second. So this mm -hmm. is an older mm -hmm. pattern by Hohe called Kisses by the sea and I stole it off Penny's favorite list. It's so, so pretty, isn't it, Dawn? It is. So I literally bought those same yarns. You did? Yeah. No, those, I didn't realize yeah. that. Look at yeah. you. So that they look a tad darker, excuse me, a tad darker in the picture. But um ba yarn again. So the ivory is still the ba yarn in the La Jolla okay. base in the La Perla color. And then this is a new to me base by Ba. It is called Savannah. It is merino cashmere nylon. MCN. Yes. This is the glacier colorway. And this is gray, I think gray onyx, but they're listed in. Mm -hmm. So I'm literally following the, uh, well, you know what? I'm not following the pattern. I know. Uh, hence why I, I tink quite a bit this morning, or actually I frogged a bit. So I've just started it. What I'm going to do is, the pattern doesn't call for using all the yarn in a 100 gram skein. So I'm going to uh, increase certain, um, certain areas. So for instance, I'm going to take these three gray lines and when I repeat them down here, I'm gonna make them wider. So that'll, that'll give me some more yardage. And then of course, the longer the rows get, then the more yarn I'm gonna need for the end of it. So I think it's 62 inches wide by pattern. Um, I would like it to be closer to 80 or 90. So I'm just gonna see what I can use to mm -hmm. try to get most of the yarn used. And it is fairly mindless knitting. It's not super. Um, it, it's not super challenging in the sense that there's not a lot of texture, but um, yeah, I like it. And could I get this done before the Stephen West knit along that starts October 9th? I'm hoping I can. How many days do you have? 
Because <laughs> you're going to have to save some for the Stephen West knit along. <laughs> so you can't spend all of them on kisses by the sea. <laughs> yes, that's a good point. Or my students are like, what are you doing? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Nothing, nothing. Uh, where are your hands moving down there? Uh, nothing? <laughs> yeah, so you know what? That is um, all that's on my needles right now. I still have the Twistmas hat that is my car knitting, and I got very little done, so there was no reason for me to show that this week. I, I should hopefully get that done. That is my September UFO, and I see it's uh, September 26th. <laughs> So I may have to drive around in the car or have Steve drive me around in the car so I can knit some more. Well, if you need a liberation, Dawn, remember, it's not a race. It isn't. Right? Yeah, that's a good point. That so, is a good point. Reminding you of one of your previous lessons learned, what was your lesson learned this week? Oh, this is fit. This is amazing. <laughs> Came to me in the shower this morning. Okay. <laughs> what do knitting and meatloaf have in common. <laughs> I know. So, and you're thinking, you're thinking like the food meatloaf, aren't you? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. I'm talking the music group meatloaf. Oh. So when I was, when I was young and maybe cool, I don't know if I was cool or not, but there was that song Paradise by the Dashboard Light. It was a horrible karaoke song, but one of the lyrics in there is, let me sleep on it. I'll give you the answer in the morning. And now, <laughs> that's taken a little out of context to take it toward knitting. But last night with knitting with the aunties, this was not working out. And I couldn't figure it out. And like you said, let your brain settle down in your sleep. And I was able to figure it out this morning where I was off. So, meatloaf. Yeah. Only you. Yes, absolutely. Only you, Don. And um, <laughs> I had to Google what the name of that song was because I couldn't remember. Uh, what song has Let Me Sleep On It, I'll Give You the Answer in the Morning. <laughs> so, yes. So there is my far-stretching knitting and meatloaf correlation. I love so, it. So what I are you it. learning? Because we, we don't really talk about what we're learning, so we kind of make it spontaneous. Um, I have to tell you the same thing happened to me again. Most of my problems really are solved at night, which is why I keep a pen and paper by my bed so that if something comes to mind, I can get up and jot it down very quickly. Either that or I wait until the morning and then jot it down. But I discovered something about myself and I am only speaking to myself. So I don't want people to hear what I'm not saying, okay? <laughs> I'm speaking about pain, so don't hear what I'm not saying. I have been very focused on my hashtag project, six sweet sweaters, 45 hats by 45 designers. And I have left three very important projects on the sidelines. One being the Kevin Costner sweater, one being the need to cast on, which is why I have this yarn around my neck, my, the shawl for my daughter-in-law, and the third being a sweater my son has asked me to modify. He wants me to alter it. And they've been on the sidelines. And it occurred to me this week that much like the way I spend my time and the way I spend my money, you've heard that from yep. time management gurus, just take a look at your day planner and your checkbook and it'll, it'll reflect what you value. I did that with my knitting this week. Oh. I am working on things for others. And for me, that kind of brought me back to the starting point of when my family asks me to knit something or I decide to knit something from my family, above all, I need to demonstrate to them that they are a priority in my life. And the way I knit for me, reflects that. So that's why I am making um, a halt. I'm going to come to a halt on the 45 hats and 45 designers um, for the next few days, and I'm going to finish the sweater. I am going to cast on the shawl, and I'm going to start tearing apart the other sweater that needs to be altered 
so that I can make sure my family knows that they're a priority in my life. So yeah. after sleeping on it, that's what came to me. Isn't so. it how amazing how easy it is when you have a focus change that was a gradual focus change? You, you had no intentions of putting those on hold. It was just the fervor or the acceleration of the other projects. Yeah, that's profound, actually. Um, yeah, and, and I think you have demonstrated in the past a much better example of putting family first. When I think about the projects that when Miss Stephanie says that she likes something, you get that yarn and you cast it on. When Steve or Austin want a hat, you get that yarn, you cast it on, and you knit for them. To me, that's a powerful message. And maybe that was kind of what was churning in my mind. And I, it just came to me. So for those of you who have been kind of watching with bated breath for the 45 hats and 45 designers, um, don't hold your breath because I'm going to take a small hiatus and put first things first, as Stephen Covey would say. Oh, wow. Yeah. Should I know him? Uh, he wrote Seven Habits <laughs> for Seven, I don't know. What is it called? Highly Effective <laughs> People? I don't know. I just know that, yeah, it, they're all, all of his tenets are part of the Leader in Me program that you do in schools, which is a wonderful program, but he does say first things first, and that was a reminder. When you said his name, I'm thinking, did we go to school with him? <laughs> <laughs> well, some people call him Stephen Covey, others Stephen Covey. I don't know him personally, but it's Seven Habits for Highly, effect, highly Effective People or something like that. Okay. All right. So... What's happening yeah. with Frivolous and Frugal and our subscribership for the giveaway? So we don't have any right this week. We didn't pick any winners. So that'll be next week for the Finish, Fix, or Frog at Cal. So feel free to keep putting pictures in there. Again, if you just need a little inspiration, just go to that and just skim through the pages. It's amazing what people are finishing. Um, and some are frogging projects and making beautiful projects um, out of that. And so we're just a little over a hundred, I think, or so away from a thousand subscribers. So that'll be probably a month or so before that happens, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little longer. And so we're kind of in just a quiet period as far as gifts. I think we're a couple weeks off from the virtual knit night. We are. That is scheduled for October 10th from 7 to 9 p.m. Central Time. As always, we will put that link up in Ravelry for Zoom about an hour before we start. That way, if there are technical difficulties, we have time to correct them. And we invite you to join us. Um, we always say that last month's was the best, whichever month that is. But I'm telling you, each month, the discussion of two hours of talking about nothing but knitting, what we're learning, what we're discovering has been so fulfilling and so enriching, at least in my own knitting. So we really encourage you to join us. Absolutely. And you oh. know, we do have a, um, I'm sorry, Dawn, nope. I spoke over you. We also have a slogan that we have with our family. So we're going to share it with you right now choose your own level of participation. If you only have 10 minutes that you can hop on, hop on for 10 minutes. If you can hop on for an hour, hop on for an hour. That we don't take that as an affront at all. So choose your own level of participation and join us if you want. Very good. Speaking of join us, I'm spending the afternoon with Hohi Locatelli. <laughs> yep, so the virtual, the zombie uh, Nitpocalypse Network. <gasps> is doing a uh, two-hour Zoom with Hohe this afternoon. <laughs> and you I'm going to... You can stand yourself, I know. You? I'm going to behave. Oh. I'm just going to sit there and knit attentively. And with not... your mouth closed on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and try not to get right up to your webcam. Yeah. How fun to... to able to zoom with another person who I just highly respect in the knitting community. So, um, so what are you going to wear for this occasion? I don't know if I'll just keep this on. Yeah, oh, maybe. Yeah. It looks very nice and I'm sure she'll recognize it. Well, and I, there'll be probably so many people on that, you know, it's, it's just going to really be a conversation between her and Amy and Megan, I think. 
And so we just get to uh, watch and listen <laughs> and be part of it. So I am uh, excited and I'll report back next week if. Well, you absolutely should because we love to report with um, Stephen West. Yeah, that was a very good thing too. So hopefully my <laughs> yarn will come in pretty soon for that and I can show you what I'm thinking. So we yeah. can't wait because we won't see you for what, four weeks? You'll just be behind your needles working on that project once it kicks off. Absolutely. Um, well, speaking of kicking off, it's about time for us to kick off. But before we do, we have a segment that's, what would Nikki say? Yes, and what would so, she say? I know. Well, this week, this is what she would say. Keep your head down. That works best in golf and knitting when concentration is needed to be successful. Isn't that the truth? It's really yeah. kind of what I learned. Keep my head down and focus on what's important. What's at right. hand. First right. things first. So thanks. Wise words. It is. So as you all know, you can find us in the show notes below on social media. Um, we're not real active on Instagram at the moment, but certainly you can send us an email or join us on Ravelry. And for whatever reason, please make sure you join us on YouTube. Your comments are delightful. Oh, absolutely. So we're hoping that the rest of your week will be a sweet twist of the frivolous and frugal. Have a great week and we'll see you soon for episode 32. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.